With patch 1.5, Cyberpunk 2077 received a wide variety of secret or hidden additions to the game. Undocumented features that were nowhere to be found in the patch notes, and in some cases intentionally so, that were implemented into the game. And even further, just a deeper explanation on things that otherwise weren't explained. So in this video, I want to highlight about 15 of these new things to you. Some things you may have noticed, but hopefully quite a few that you haven't noticed yet. And CDPR is even aware of this, as in the patch notes alone, they mention some kind of secret quests that are only available on next gen and not actually appearing on last gen, which is pretty interesting, and I have a theory on what that actually is. So one of the first ones that's very simple is V's shadow is now fixed in game. Previously, it had all kinds of messed up animations, it would show you as bald, now it'll actually work properly as in the animations look appropriate as well as it'll reflect what clothing and hair choices you do make it doesn't reflect helmets most of the time but if you have poofy hair or more relaxed hair you'll actually see that in your shadow definitely a huge upgrade over your shadow just being bald they also added in something from that 2018 demo of cyberpunk that being the aerial mantis blades takedown as now if you have the right circumstances you could trigger this pretty epic and brutal looking aerial takedown with mantis blades the way you have to get this to work is obviously actually have mantis blades on your character but then most importantly you have to take the hidden dragon perk and this is a perk that actually lets you do aerial takedowns from there go atop a ledge or something that gives you an elevated position on an enemy have your mantis blades actually out and you basically just jump on the head of an enemy there's no need to apply any attack or click any buttons to swing you just actually jump on their head and this animation will play assuming you did things correctly you typically could only use it one time in combat again it's a pretty brutal animation, but overall it's a pretty cool new feature and definitely a nice callback to that 2018 demo. It definitely seems like it's at least a little bit buggy. It'll hold the camera for a split second after the animation finishes, so you're kind of stuck in the position it leaves you, and sometimes it would have me pointing directly up into the air. But overall, it's a cool new addition. You'll also notice the Mantis Blades glow brighter. That's just another change with this update. All of the weapons that glow have a bit of a brighter glow now. Monowire got a bit of a change in that it is now governed by reflexes and specifically uses the Blades perk tree, actually just like Mantis Blades. Monowire was previously classified as a blunt weapon, but now since it's going to benefit from all the Blade perks, it's actually pretty powerful. Your old Monowire build is probably useless, and if you've been playing with that build, you probably noticed that because you're going to be doing way less damage. But if you do spec into Blades, which I think is more common and more popular than unarmed, Monowire can become insanely strong. I'm playing on top difficulty here, and top difficulty with this update did get some buffs, so it is going to be harder overall. Melee weapons now have that first time equip animation, so when you take them out for the first time it'll play a more unique animation. This is always a thing for ranged weapons, but now it's actually getting melee weapon support also. It doesn't apply to quite everything, but it applies to quite a few of the more popular ones. Some of the most basic weapons like hatchets, pipes, and others don't have any new animation, but again, some of the big ones do, and it's nice to see this fleshed out. Another callback to 2018, it seems like they added in the 2018 demo character as a pre set of sorts. So as you're in the character creator, if you select preset 22 on most of the face options, and these being some of the biological parts of the face, like the nose, ears, etc., you'll start to notice that this is the 2018 demo V. That of course being that famous 48 minutes of gameplay that CDPR showed off, and the V they were playing as during that gameplay. So now with the character creator overall, you can make something that looks very similar to that 2018 V. I'm not the best at this, there's definitely some better examples online with players taking it a bit further, doing it better than me. The character creator in general actually got a variety of changes. There's some lighting changes now as you're actually editing your character, they'll touch parts of their face. You may have noticed that as I was customizing this V. So if you're touching around the mouth or the eyes, you might see your character actually touch that part of their face. I'm not sure this is positive. It's kind of a small detail, but as you're editing the eyes, you want to see the eyes. So them touching the eyes isn't always a good thing. With this update, all of the fixers got new rewards if you complete all of their gigs. And now I'm going to tell you what those are. But if you don't want to know what those are, click on that timestamp. I imagine some of you just want to find out for yourself, but some of these are a bit confusing. So completing all the gigs for Dakota Smith will give you a custom modified Thornton Mackinac, that being the pickup truck in the world, and this version is definitely modified more, and overall it looks pretty cool. I like the pickup truck, and I like this modified version. It's still not the fastest, but I could definitely see this being pretty popular with some people. Dino is going to give you a custom Quadra, and even though there's a wide variety of custom Quadras already, this one's pretty cool because, as some of you may notice, this is 
actually Bullet, or at least it seems pretty clear that was an inspiration for this one. Bullet is a movie, and the car from that movie became quite famous, such that 4 literally offers limited releases special edition Mustangs that are Bullets. Wakako gives you a new custom katana with Bayako. This looks great, it has a great visual style to it, but it also has the added, as you do charge attacks with this one, holding down the attack button, you'll actually leap towards your enemies, giving it a bit of flair and flavor. Padre gives you Seraph, every subsequent hit you land on an enemy increases the chances of lighting them on fire, and while attacking enemies that are on fire, your weapon will deal additional damage to them. Pretty fun overall combo, and again, another fun unique weapon. El Capitan will give you a new Bloody Maria shotgun. The visuals on this one are probably my favorite out of any of them, the skin just looks really good. It increases the chances of knockdowns, bleeding, and dismemberment on enemies, so it's just all around going to be brutal on enemies. And a ton of fun to use. I definitely had the most fun messing around and blowing away police officers in Night City. And then lastly, what is by far the most disappointing by an order of magnitude, Regina Jones, which I would argue perhaps has some of the toughest matchups, gives you a legendary Neofiber. You literally just buy a legendary Neofiber from a ripper dock at any point in Night City for 7,000 eddies. There's nothing unique or special about this, it's literally just a cybernetic you'd use. Then we have the mystery around the secret quests. In the patch notes, there's this entry around quests. Added a few secrets in Night City to be discovered by players. Due to some technical challenges, this change is not available on the previous generation of consoles. So now, I have a few theories on what this actually is, with one front runner, and that's the Iguana Egg, which is a secret new addition to this game in general, and a pretty epic one. In Cyberpunk 2077's prologue, as you're doing the heist mission, when you go to Yurinobu's apartment, you will see an Iguana. It's this cool moment, you're kind of like, whoa, and Jackie comments on it with you, and if you go around its enclosure, there is a rare Iguana Egg that you can pick up behind it. This is one of those things that's been in the game for a while, but then they took it out, but then now they added it back in with patch 1.5. The reason they added this back in is because it got some new features. As now, when you return to V's apartment, it seems like for at least some people, you'll have to have talked to Takamura before this will appear. You'll find a small bowl that you can place the egg inside. Johnny will even pop up for a moment, telling you to be patient. And it seems like what you have to do here is just skip a bunch of time. You can either do this by just actually playing the game, but who's got time for that? So what I did was skip time constantly, many, many, many times in the fancy new in-game menu. I'm not really sure how many times it took because this actually bugged out for me as I literally spent about 45 minutes to an hour in real life time just sitting here at my computer skipping time in cyberpunk but eventually I was getting incredibly frustrated so I decided to try something else I fast traveled away from V's apartment then back to V's apartment only to discover that the iguana egg had hatched and Johnny was back to comment on it and from there you do have a pet iguana in your apartment you could have this at the same time as your pet cat the iguana is pretty simple you can pet him he'll make some movements around around as he's sitting there, but he'll always stay in the same spot. The movements are very minor just around his head, and it's pretty cool, albeit minor. I know some of you are already pretty frustrated, like, hey, I already did the prologue to the game. Is there any way I can get the egg? There's a few tutorials online how do you glitch back into Yorinobu's apartment if you already completed the prologue, or if you're on PC, you can download Cyber Engine Tweaks and literally just use a console command to teleport you there, and then you can just pick up the egg, then you teleport back out and go back to your apartment. I'll have a link to this console command down below as well as just the raw text if you just want to paste it in. And the reason I think this might be one of those hidden secrets that are not on last gen is I've seen a ton of posts online of people saying they can actually find the bowl in their apartment even though they've beat the game or completed the appropriate quest with Takamura. And I've asked a couple of those people and all of them thus far have seemed to be on last gen whether it be an Xbox One X or a PS4 Pro or of course an Xbox One and PS4 but the people specifically said those other two systems. So I don't know if this is one of the things not on last last gen, but that's my running theory thus far. Please comment down below. Have you been able to find the egg? Have you been able to find the bowl back in your apartment? Either way though, a really cool new one and a cool new pet to get in your original apartment. Although some of the other things I suspect are not fully implemented on last gen are some of the overhauls to NPCs and random encounters. There's a bunch of new ones. Like now, if it starts raining in Night City, NPCs will take out umbrellas. It's a pretty nice touch and you can even see the water droplets roll off the umbrellas. There's more clothing variety among NPCs in the world overall. It seems like there's occasionally a police chase random encounter. I couldn't find this myself, but there's some reports of tiger claws shooting out from windows and then the police chasing
releasing them, as well as you can see some clips online of that. There is not full-fledged police overhauls in Cyberpunk, at least not yet, unfortunately. So if there's no police chases, police still spawn a short distance away from you. None of that has been overhauled, but this just seems to be a random thing that can spawn. As well as there's this robot. I'm not totally sure if this is new. I tried Googling all around on this. I couldn't find any posts talking about it, but basically at this location under a bridge in Kabuki, there's actually just this robot that you can repair, it does have a fairly high requirement, and then once you repair him, he'll start playing some music and dancing for you. As far as I can tell, this is a new thing added, but again, I may be mistaken on this one. I wasn't able to confirm it one way or another. Although speaking of robots, another pretty cool upgrade with this is it seems like the Delamain car actually now talks sometimes. So of course, Delamain talks in the game, you do have the quests associated with that character, and then after you complete his specific side quest, you actually can get your own personal vehicle, who never talked, and it was super disappointing, but seemingly with 1.5, he has a couple of occasional voice lines, and these seem to be hyper occasional. I saw some posts online about this, and immediately as I got in the car in-game, he did actually say something to me. Father would be proud of us. But after driving around for literally about a half hour in real world time, I could not get him to say anything else. There's some posts online of other people having them randomly say something as they're driving around in him. It just seems like it is incredibly rare, but he does seem to have a few voice lines now, which is a nice touch. It would be nice if it happened more often, or perhaps there's an obscure trigger to actually get him to say something. I tried a variety of things to get him speaking, but nothing was seeming to work. It seems like some weapons got some stealth changes or edits. Some weapons almost look like they got their max ranges changed, so they won't actually be able to shoot as far, while snipers conversely can now shoot further, and the Overwatch sniper rifle in particular got a pretty big nerf in that it could no longer shoot through walls, this significantly hurting the stealth builds around this. Although it does seem like the other major sniper rifle still can shoot through walls, so you don't have to fret overall, just the Overwatch kind of got a hard nerf there. As well as grenades have no weight anymore, but I'm sure many of you already noticed that. A change you probably noticed is now to actually fast travel, you have to hold down the fast travel button, you can no longer just accidentally tap the marker, which is a super nice quality of life change. I would constantly mess this up. But something that isn't a super nice quality of life change is it seems like with these overall map changes and overhauls, they actually change the fast travel map. Map, which I hate, as now on the fast travel map, you can only see fast travel points. And to some of you, you might be like, well, yeah, it was always like that. Except no, it wasn't, as I guess a lesser known feature was on the fast travel map, you could actually see the full map, you just had to toggle it on. AKA, you could see all of the icons on the map. I use this religiously. Every time I was trying to fast travel somewhere, I would turn on all the icons. Seems like they removed that, so now you could only see fast travel markers, and you have to manually select a position in the regular map, then transition to the fast travel map to get there. Perhaps this is just a me issue, but it was really frustrating to make this discovery, and I even constantly keep opening the fast travel map, then having to back out and go back to the traditional one. But overall, yeah, those are 15 or so undocumented or hidden feature additions that came to you cyberpunk with this update. And it's definitely not comprehensive, there's a ton of stuff with romance, like being able to hug your partner occasionally, being able to sleep with them, although CDPR talked about that. I do have a full review of sorts coming to patch 1.5 this Thursday, a deeper dive in my overall thoughts on the changes, where Cyberpunk goes from here, a bigger video on it overall. But for now, hopefully you guys found this one informative, hopefully you guys are enjoying Cyberpunk. I'm also going to have a video going over some mods to enhance this newly updated experience, because even though the game got some huge upgrades, you can make it even better with a few select mod downloads. So if you do want to get subscribed, I'll have all of that content coming shortly, but otherwise, until next time, I thank you all again for for watching and I hope to see you all later.